Well guys, the big moment is here. You can see we have all of our trim work done, doors, baseboards, everything. The room is ready for flooring. Today's flooring day. A lot of you can probably guess what the flooring is gonna be. We're going to be installing carpet. This is our first time ever properly installing carpeting. So we're gonna find out if carpet is a DIY job. We're gonna figure out how to do it as we go and hopefully we get a good job out of this. Now I just wanna make a note that you can install carpeting before or after putting your trim in. We've opted to do it after the trim work was done, but we spaced all of our trim 3 eighths of an inch off the floor. So we have a gap under everything that we're gonna be tucking the carpet under for a cleaner look. That's just how we're doing it. So I guess one of the first things we have to do is get our tackless strips down. We got our tackless strips unpacked. We're gonna install them. Heads up, the trim work is installed, but we didn't hole fill it. So if you see any kind of sloppy work, see nails on the trim, they'll be covered later. We just finished up all the tack strips and they were a little tricky around the doorways here but we figured it out and we're ready for padding. So far the installation has been totally traditional. Trim on, tackless strips are nailed down. This is where it gets different. Instead of the typical foam padding, we are going to be installing a wool pad. This is 100% natural wool. It smells like a farm. It's just stinky, but stinky in a good way. If you're not, if you're not familiar with kind of wool products like this, they have a very strong, distinct smell. Some people don't like it. It's just that, that sheepy smell. So anyway, we opted for a wool padding because we're trying to minimize plastics in our home. I know sometimes you need them, but if there's a good alternative, and I think this is a good alternative, then we want to do it. It's naturally resistant to mold, it handles the moisture, it just does everything better than foam, than fake recycled foam, and this isn't going to give off any toxic VOCs in our home. It installs just like foam padding. I think we just roll it out, cut it, staple it down. No! Does this roll have to be so big? Okay. Uh, grab the end and we're gonna we're gonna turn the rug side this whole thing sideways. Okay, a little more. Move that cord, baby. One sixty and a half. Yeah, I hope it's one sixty and a half. Is all right. Let's go on the other corner. He's been watching us work for a long time. He knows. He knows how to figure stuff out. Well, I would 
Or you want me to put in some clips? You have common sense, huh? Yeah. And that's what I'm talking about. Padding is down. This looks awesome. It went so easily, quickly, smoothly. It's dead flat. Cutting into the walls was pretty simple. And we are ready for the carpet. So I didn't know how this project would go coming into it because like I said, I've never done carpeting before. I've rolled out carpeting, but I've never fully installed it. That's about all I've done is just rolled it out. I know we're getting to the hard part, actual the actual carpet, but I have a lot more confidence going into that because it's looking so good so far. Here is the reveal of the flooring. We're gonna pull it in here, get it somehow unrolled. This room is 10 feet by like 23 feet and our carpet is 12 feet by 24 feet. So we have this massive roll that we have to get unrolled in this little room. Since it's 12 feet long, we can't unroll it the way you'd naturally want to unroll it. So we're gonna to have to basically turn it sideways and unroll all 24 feet of it and then try to rotate it into the room. I think it's gonna be a little bit hard, but we'll get it. Before we bring it in, I will say that on top of buying a wool pad, we bought a wool carpet. Now the reason we're doing carpeting is Ashley's idea. She's been wanting carpeting for years. She just wants a soft floor to walk on. And I've always leaned toward tile and wood she said, carpet. So this is the house where we're gonna make Ashley's dream bedroom come true. And so we're going with a nice, soft, cozy carpet. So in doing our research, we knew we wanted a natural material. We always try to go natural. I always think about the, and not just the air quality in the home. When you have a plastic rug in your home, it's not healthy. But also when it's done, when you dispose of it, what do you do with this big plastic roll of carpeting? Uh, a lot of people, just throw it in the landfill or use it as ground cover, but it just sits there. And this, all of this, you could use it in your garden as weed cover and it would be totally organic and natural and it would be fine, so it's easy to get rid of. But what was really interesting is that wool carpet, wool has a longer lifespan and is more durable than plastic carpeting that you buy at the store. So this carpeting that we're gonna install is expected to last like 25 years. Whereas store carpeting has a lifetime of maybe 10 years. Um, and I know they're gonna have different length warranties and all that, but in real use, wool is just more durable when taken care of. I mean, you can't have a dog peeing on the floor, but you, if you keep it clean, it, it'll be more resilient to matting and flattening than a plastic carpet will. Well, the carpet doesn't smell at all. <clears throat> yeah. That we can do this without, maybe we can. So let's roll it back and just get it finished off. All right. So heavy, but maybe I can do it. It's going okay, actually. Yeah. Um, I gotta move everything so we can pull it that way, but this is where we're at right now. What do you think of the color? Me? Yeah. It's 
fine. It's not too dark. Yeah. I thought it looks different though than what we saw online. I don't know, because I saw a couple different pictures. And one of them looked different than the other. Oh. I have the carpet more or less straight along this back wall and pretty smooth. I'm going to go ahead and get a, I'm going to take a tucking tool and actually start tucking it under the baseboard. Remember I said we left three eighths of an inch underneath all of our trim. So now I have a spot to kind of wedge that. And in doing that, it's going to be under the baseboard coming up and grabbing that tackless strip that we put down. And those nails on that strip are going to hold the carpet. Once we get this whole wall tucked and smooth, we can start pulling off of this strip. So this is going to grip the carpet and we can start stretching and smoothing out from there, from the middle. And I think it's going to go okay. Hopefully I have it even enough that I can just tuck it under the trim and get going. It's a little squish, like a little hard to squish it under there, but it's going. It doesn't feel like there's too much. We're rough cutting the doors kind of by hand and we'll go back through and rework them as we go. And this carpet cutting tool is working really good on the long straight edges. You're holding this in. This feels like a big success, just getting this Yeah, it'll piece be out so here. nice without that flopping anymore. Mm -hmm. Oh, did I mention not only is this a wool carpet, but this is natural jute backing, a natural fiber backing with natural latex rubber as a binder. So this thing is 100% natural biodegradable. I think that's cool. How do you roll it now? <laughs> right? Yeah. That works. Wow. Expertly rolled up. So now we're gonna go around the room and use the carpet What? We're going to use the carpet stretcher <laughs> tool. That you can cut. Mm -hmm. So far the carpet is going pretty well though, yeah. overall. <clears throat> Having the right tools really helps. This is a carpet cutting tool that I bought off eBay, used, even though they're not that expensive new. You just got to get your carpet started and then you just run it. Not like I'm doing, but against your baseboard. 
and it just cuts it at the right. Yeah. Everything. You just have to like hold your hand in here, right? Yeah. Well, if you hold this firmly enough, it, it kind of pushes it in as it goes. Oh. I'm trying to cut it a little short. Like right now, I want it a little longer than this. But my guess is that when I stretch it, it's gonna pull more carpet in there anyway. I mean, this is almost perfect, but we have three quarter inches under the baseboard that we can use, so. Yeah. Getting a lot better. Working our way around the room. The wrinkles are pretty much out. Oh, it looks fantastic, I think. I would say the wrinkles are gone. Yeah. I don't know if it's as tight as it can be, but it's definitely smooth. Just trying to see, I might have to cut a little over here. This feels a little bit long. It looks long. I'll start trimming it right now. Now it is the next day, early in the morning, and I just wanted to show you guys the finished product. Last night, we pulled this together and it looks fantastic. I don't know if you can notice, not just my morning voice, but how much different it sounds in here. The room is ready for flooring. Today's flooring day. It is a lot less echoey than it was before, already with just the carpet. Once the furniture is in, it's gonna be awesome. The one thing I wanted to say is this carpet went in so much easier and so much smoother than I ever expected. I was thinking that this was going to be a tough job, but with the right tools, it just made all the difference. The carpet cutter to just cut it evenly along the wall, the carpet stretcher that I hit with my knee to stretch the carpet flat and get out the wrinkles, and the carpet tucker that little tool that I used to kind of jam it down in there. And then lastly, a knife. Just a simple knife to cut the carpet in those odd places. Now, without those four tools, this would have been a disaster. You gotta have the right tools for the job, and it was just amazing. The carpet is beautiful. It is not the color we expected. That's not a complaint, but I'm just warning you. If you're gonna look at carpet, especially carpet online like we did, get a sample so you know what to get. We're not very picky. So we're not worried about it. It looks great. Now, did I do a perfect job? I did a great job. It's not perfect, I'm sure. Uh, it could probably be stretched a little more. I was afraid of, you know, overdoing it and I, I wasn't really sure how to handle it, but it could probably be stretched, but it looks fine. It's smooth, it's even. I'm not worried about it. Stretching can always happen in the future. Your carpet can always be re-stretched, so I'm not worried about that. Otherwise, the cuts were good. It tucked under, it looks even. A couple of scratches on the baseboard, but I'm not too worried about that either. You don't even notice it. The only thing we have to do now is vacuum all the little fibers that are loose from cutting the edges and start moving in. I do have a couple little trim works to do in the corners and odds and ends, but we're, we're very close to getting in here. I'm really happy with how the threshold turned out in that bathroom. I made that at the last minute, and I wish I showed you the process, but I did make that custom threshold for the bathroom to go over the tile and then over the carpet. I don't know if you know, but it wasn't uncommon to have large wooden thresholds like that in the old houses, so it works well and I think it looks really awesome. Now I know there's probably going to be a lot of questions about wool carpeting. We've bought wool area rugs for a while now. We've really liked them. The one thing you have to know about wool, well, a couple things, is um, it will shed. 
Natural fiber rugs always shed, so expect shedding at first. The first vacuumings, you know, just there's gonna be fiber in your home, you gotta deal with that. The second thing is never use a beater bar in your vacuum. The beater bar is the thing that spins, the brush. You have to use a vacuum where you can turn that off or it doesn't have it at all. That's a big reason why we wanted to install our central vacuum system, which we haven't done yet. Because with a central vacuum, it has awesome suction, really powerful, but you don't need a beater bar. You just have a hose with a regular vacuum head, no, no power. The reason you don't want to do that is because those bars that beat the rug, they can really ruin fiber, natural fiber rugs like this. Honestly, they ruin every rug, but we want to maintain this and you don't want to be uh, shredding up and whipping up the fibers. It'll just cause lots of pilling and shredding and just picture a wool sweater and then picture going over it with your vacuum. Obviously, it's going to ruin it. So no beater bars and expect some shedding. The shedding does go away and that's why we actually we chose a, a looped rug instead of a cut rug because the loop ones tend to shed less in our experience. So I don't know if there's anything else to say about it. We're happy that we're at this point. It's pretty amazing. It looks good. I hope you guys like the flooring choice. This is our first time doing carpet in any of our homes that we've ever owned ever. So that's pretty crazy when you think about it. Oh, and it smells good in here. No farmy smell. The underlayment, the padding was kind of farmy, but the carpet was clean smelling and it really locked it in. It's totally nice in here. So no problem there. That's it, I'm gonna stop rambling. Thanks for watching, thanks for coming along. Our floor choice revealed. And now we're gonna to head to the store, see if we can find a new vacuum. We're gonna pick up a new shop vac because the shop vac will vacuum up this rug nicely until we can get our central vac hooked up. I don't wanna use our dirty existing shop vac that I use to clean up messes. Uh, we want something just for this room that we're gonna keep clean. That's our plan for now. So. We're off to the store. Thanks for watching, and until next time, take care.